with 9.0.5 just a few weeks in, we have seen all of your questions about some of the huge covenant changes that came with the patch. You might have heard of Necrolord Arms Warriors or Night Fae Resto Shamans and maybe you're wondering if you should make the switch. Well, this is the guide for you. Today we will be covering some of the most important covenant changes in patch 9.0.5, letting you know which ones are legit and which ones might just be some off-meta flukes. But before we go into some of the changes, we have a question for all of you. If you could nerf just one covenant ability, what would it be? Would it be Convoke the Spirits for Night Fae Druids or maybe Divine Toll from Paladins? We would personally nerf Mind Games. Even though it is a unique and interesting ability, it makes Venthyr the default choice for Priests. The other covenant abilities for Priests are almost never seen in Arena due to the strength of Mind Games, which is unfortunate because the other abilities like Boon of the Ascended and Fey Guardians look really interesting for PvP. Divine Toll would be another option since it is by far the best ability for Red Paladins, but that's mostly because of the Ring and Clarity Conduit. Of course, it does a ton of damage, but unlike other covenant abilities, it is really difficult to outplay. In any case, let us know in the comments below which Covenant ability you think should be nerfed. We would love to hear your thoughts. Rogues are probably the class that saw the biggest shift overall in their Covenants. The days of Kyrian are long behind and now both Sub and Assassination Rogues have much stronger Covenant options. The new Covenant of choice for Sub Rogues is Venthyr, which saw a huge buff to Flagellation in patch 9.0.5. With the removal of its energy cost and buff to overall damage, this ability works well into the damage kit of rogues. Because its damage scales based on combo points spent, it synergizes well with Shadow Blades and Marked for Death, both of which increase combo point generation. Sub rogues playing Venthyr should consider playing the Theotar Soulbind, as the damage increase from Soothing Shade is too much to pass up. Because Mastery increases your finisher damage, getting a Soothing Shade proc can allow you to do massive damage, especially in combination with Flagellation, which you generally want to use when you know you will be spamming Eviscerate. This of course is really important since most rogues play RMP, so having the additional burst from Venthyr adds to your kill options. It is pretty clear now that after the patch, Venthyr is likely the best covenant for sub rogues, edging its spot over Night Fae. Both of these covenants are better than Necrolord and definitely better than Kyrian for the subtlety spec. But if sub isn't your primary spec and you prefer to play Assassination, then there is definitely a new covenant option for you. Necrolord is now the covenant of choice for Assassination rogue mains. With Fleshcraft and Serrated Bone Strike receiving buffs, it's time for you to join the Maldraxian Clan of the Shadowlands. The Fleshcraft buff affects all classes in the Necrolord Covenant, but it is a huge buff to Rogue due to how squishy they are in Arena. The additional Absorb granted by Fleshcraft gives Rogues an additional defensive option, something they desperately need. Necrolord offers some additional defensive power in the form of the Soulbind passive called Ooze's Frictionless Coating. This ability will automatically proc at 50% HP, preventing Rogues from getting easily gibbed by burst damage. For this reason, Plague Divisor Marilith is the Soulbind of choice for Necrolord Rogues. And in addition to boosting rogue defensives, Necrolord offers Serrated Bone Strike as its active ability. This spell was buffed in patch 9.0.5, allowing it to generate combo points based on how many bone spikes are currently active. This means that Assassination Rogues can generate up to 5 combo points when using this ability, assuming Bone Spike is already on multiple targets. Because Bone Spike can crit, it also benefits from the Seal Fate passive, making it an efficient combo point builder. This additional combo point generation helps sustain damage as Assassination, a spec that relies on constantly applying Rupture to multiple targets. Overall, Necrolord seems to be too good to pass up right now for Assassination Rogues. Due to the weak defensive options of the Rogue class and due to needing efficient combo point builders to spread damage, Assassination Rogues should definitely look into Necrolord. So if you're wondering which Covenant to play now, it really depends on a few things. If you plan to only play Assassination, then Necrolord is definitely the Covenant for you. If you like to bounce between Assassination and Sub, then it is likely Venthyr that will benefit you the most. Venthyr is still a solid spec for Assassination Rogues, giving them an additional burst cooldown that can line up with Vendetta for huge damage. Because Venthyr works well for both Sub and Assassination, you probably can't go wrong choosing this Covenant. Next on our list are Arms Warriors who are one of the few specs where you might want to consider a Covenant change. Prior to the patch, Warriors bounced between Venthyr and Kyrian, both of which offered fairly unique flavors and benefits. Venthyr is widely considered to be the more aggressive and generally more flexible option, where you sacrifice the utility of Kyrian Spear and File of Serenity in order to get more uptime and consistent damage, something that benefits Warriors no matter what matchups they're playing. With 9.0.5, there was a massive buff to the Conqueror's Banner Necrolord ability. Instead of providing crit, it now gives teamwide mastery which is generally a more valuable stat for most classes. 
On top of that, its cooldown was reduced from 3 minutes to 2 minutes, allowing it to line up better with other cooldowns. And if that wasn't enough, it also now prevents movement speed from being reduced below 100% while it's active, allowing the warrior and their party member to have 100% uptime on enemy targets. This change was a massive buff to warrior cleaves that benefit a lot from mastery like DKs, red paladins, and enhancement shamans. So if you consistently play turbo cleave or TSG, this might be your best covenant. Although less popular, Conqueror's Banner would also work well in Warrior Boomkin because of how much balance Druid scales with Mastery. It should be noted too that this effect also works on healers, so while the banner is active, your healer will also be buffed for its duration. Just like Assassination Rogues, the Soulbind of choice is likely Plague Divisor Marilith, due primarily to the strength of Ooze's frictionless coating. This passive, combined with Fleshcraft, adds to the arsenal of cooldowns that warriors have for themselves and for their team. So if you're thinking about changing, here are some considerations. Firstly, Venthyr is still really good for Arms Warrior. It is still probably the most flexible option, working well in pretty much any comp and in any situation. Kyrian is also still really good, especially into Rogue Mage where having the additional control is more important than the damage from Condemn. So where does that put Necrolord? Well, if you have a dedicated set of arena partners, preferably DKs, Rets, and Enhancement Shamans who you can play with regularly, then a Necrolord swap might be worth it. 400 Mastery is a huge buff, but some specs benefit more than others from this buff. But if you can't find stable partners and you're in the solo queue grind, then Venthia remains the best Covenant option. Simply put, it is just way more versatile than the niche benefit of Necrolord. Condemned is easy to use and works better in more comps, so if you switch comps often, as you do with LFG queuing, then Venthyr is probably your best option. If you watched our video a few weeks ago about sleeper OP specs, then you already know how strong BM Hunters are. And if you need a refresher, BM Hunters are one of the strongest DPS specs in the game right now. Although they were heavily slapped on early in the expansion, they have slowly crept their way up to the highest levels of play, even being represented in the first round of the AWC circuit, where a BM Hunter was nearly matching the damage of an Affliction Warlock. It is clear that BM Hunters do some of the most consistent damage in the game. Very few classes can keep up with the raw DPS that they are able to do. The main problem with their damage is unlike Rat Paladins who do a bunch of big damage with their hits, BM Hunter damage is actually a bunch of smaller numbers happening all the time. Their abilities, despite hitting often, don't actually hit that hard. This means their pressure is relatively predictable and their kills can usually be mitigated by proper defensive cooldown rotation. Well, that's exactly where the Venthyr ability Flayed Shot comes in. This ability gives BM Hunters a ranged bleed that gives random kill shot procs, giving them a hard hitting ability that they can weave into their high damage throughput. Kill shot can crit well over 10k, so it makes BM Hunter damage significantly more threatening. Without kill shot, BM Hunters can actually struggle to land kills despite doing some of the highest DPS in the game. This ability rounds out their spec by opening up a procable win condition. On top of that, the Thrill Seeker ability from Nagia the Mistblade is really strong for BM Hunters. With haste as one of their best stats, getting the Euphoria buff during Bestial Wrath is a huge damage multiplier on top of their already high sustained damage. It seems clear right now that Venthyr is the best covenant for BM Hunters, but what if you play all Hunter specs? Well, fortunately, Venthyr is still good for both marksmanship and survival. If you plan on playing marks exclusively though, then maybe you should stay Kyrian as it remains the best covenant for marks specifically. That being said, you can still get by playing Venthyr Mark's Hunter and it will also give you some flexibility to play the other Hunter specs. And no matter what spec you play in Arena, we have resources available for you over at skillcaps.com slash wow. There, you will find our massive collection of videos including class courses and matchup guides designed specifically to increase your rating in Arena. We work with some of the best wow PvPers of all time to deliver a unique instructional experience. Our team of pro players and rank 1 gladiators have years of detailed game knowledge that goes directly into making each video. Whether you're just starting out your PvP journey or whether you're looking to push your rating to gladiator and above, we have something to offer you. By joining, you will get instant access to all of our videos as well as an invite to our premium discord giving you the ability to directly ask questions to our pro players. So if you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, check out skillcaps.com slash wow today. Now it's time to look at some off-meta covenant options that are really cool but not consistent enough to be used in rated play. Starting off our Resto Shamans who saw a buff to the Night Fae Covenant ability called Fae Transfusion. This is one of the most unique spells in the game, functioning as a channeled AoE effect that splits its damage among all targets. This damage is then stored and can be used as an AoE heal. 
the patch increased its damage by 25%, and healing from damage conversion rate was increased along with the buff of its healing range to 20 yards. We do admit the damage from Fate Transfusion is pretty nutty when used on a single target. It's possible for a Resto Shaman to deal well over 25k damage from Fate Transfusion channel when it hits a single player, and doing 25k damage over a 3 second channel is some of the highest damage output in the game, let alone for a healer. Its main drawback is that the damage is split between enemy targets, so if its AoE damage hits a second target, the damage done to the kill target is essentially cut in half. When you combine this with enemy pets also being able to soak damage, it makes the spell fairly unreliable in competitive 3v3 situations. It's too much of a gimmick to rely on consistently across all matchups. With that in mind, if you only play 2v2, then it might actually be your best option, since it's much easier to land a full channel on a single target in a 2v2 match. On top of that, having Soul Shape is actually quite useful as a Resto Shaman, giving you additional mobility against all of the melee you encounter in 2v2. But if you're planning to play 3s, then you should probably stay Necrolord for the time being. Fleshcraft is still a strong defensive option for Resto Shamans, especially combined with Ooze's frictionless coating. On top of that, the combination of Fleshcraft and Spirit Walker's Grace remains really difficult to counter due to it providing both CC and interrupt immunity when both are active. And speaking of Night Fae flukes, we have to talk about Priests for a second. Night Fae gives Priests the Fae Guardian's ability, which summons different fairies depending on what spells are used. When used with Shadow Word Pain, the fairies will restore mana to you whenever the dotted player attacks. When used with Power Word Shield on a friendly target, the target will get an additional 20% damage reduction. And when used with Flash Heal or Shadow Mend, the target will get a 100% increase to their cooldown recovery rate, which simply means their cooldowns will come up faster. If this sounds confusing, we don't know what you expected about an ability based around summoning three fairies. Patch 9.0.5 buffed this ability, and some holy and dis priests are now wondering if they should make the jump into Night Fae. After all, Soul Shape does seem appealing since priests are so susceptible for getting trained by melee, so it makes sense to switch, right? Well, not so fast. Although it did receive buffs from the patch, this Covenant ability is simply nowhere near the power level of Venthyr. Mind Games remains one of the best Priest abilities, and even one of the best abilities in the game. The opportunity cost of giving up Mind Games is too high right now. With hybrid healing at an all-time high, Mind Games is one of the primary win conditions for Priest teams of all specs. Its ability to completely counter healing is too valuable in a meta where healing is high and games are starting to draw out. So don't be fooled by those mischievous fairies, hang out with the vampires of Venthyr for now. With all of this in mind, what are some predictions for future Covenant changes? If anything, the Covenant system is one of the most complicated parts of WoW PvP. Not only do the Covenant abilities change, but the way the game is played changes too. We saw some of the fastest paced arena games ever at the start of the expansion. Now with the season well underway, we are starting to see the game slow down a bit. It is clear that for some classes, Necrolord is a super important part of their defensive toolkit. The Absorb from Fleshcraft is strong, but the on proc shield from Ooze's frictionless coating might be even more valuable. The ability to shut down a kill attempt with an auto proc shield prevents a lot of unnecessary losses. With this in mind, as the meta transitions to a slower paced defensive game, don't be surprised to see more specs switching over to Necrolord. We are already starting to see some top level Pharaoh Druids swap over to Necrolord. The damage bonus of Adaptive Swarm increases their bleed damage on enemy targets, but almost more importantly, it increases the healing of Frenzied Regeneration to themselves. These defensive bonuses are enough for some Feral Druids to abandon the damage bonus of Kyrian, or everyone's favorite ability Convoke the Spirits from Night Fae. In any case, expect to see some changes not only to Covenants, but also to the way the game is changed. It's incredibly likely that we will see some additional tuning to Covenant spells, even in the near future. And there you have it, those are the biggest Covenant changes in patch 9.0.5. If you play Rogue, Warrior, or Hunter, you might have some renowned grinding to do. If your class or spec wasn't mentioned, you probably don't need to make any major covenant swaps yet. With that in mind, we want to keep you up to date on all major covenant changes, so be sure to subscribe and turn all notifications on. Also, let us know in the comments what you think. Are you planning to change covenants soon?